Wood is one of the most versatile building materials in the world. It's easy to cut and shape, it grows naturally, and it's strong. But that strength has limitations. I've been building out my shop space lately, and I wanted some of my big tools to fit beneath the back wall countertop. That meant that I would need a long span for my table saw, about 60 inches. But I'm building these cabinets out of half inch ply, and that is way too long of a span for this material. Even with this 1x2 face frame and a back panel attached. To gain that extra strength, I had to bring a stronger material into play. Steel. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. I've actually done this before on my channel, in my table saw cart video, but that one didn't get watched a lot, and I thought that this detail might have gotten overlooked in the process. So I'm giving it more focus here. Again, the reason this is an issue is because of overspanning. Half inch thick material just cannot bridge a gap that wide. You instantly get flexing in the lumber. Just look how much I can deflect it with my hand. Clearly that's not going to work for a countertop area. I wanted to be able to set heavy things up here, possibly do some work on it. I don't want it to bow. I could support the area with thicker lumber, like 2x4. That's how people build a lot of stuff like this. But wood is just bulky. It needs that bulk to gain strength. I didn't want this cabinet to look bulky. I wanted it to be thin, elegant and I wanted to leave maximum room for storing tools underneath. So, every inch counted. To do this, I was going to have to rely on metal for support. Metal just has incredible strength properties. It can be very thin and narrow, but still be very strong. And you can actually find a good number of metal building materials in the big box stores. Lowe's and Home Depot both carry engineered metal products. They usually keep them near the hardware aisle. Here, you'll find a variety of 4 foot to 8 foot lengths of steel and aluminum in different configurations. These right angle products are my favorite. The 90 degree inside corner creates a lot of strength. And you have two flat faces for support. In the past, I've used the slotted zinc plated steel for stuff like this. But for this project, I wanted something even narrower. So I went with this plain angled steel and six foot lengths. It's just one inch across both faces. So if I went for half inch ply for the top and a one and a half inch face frame, then the full width of the steel would be hidden behind the face. But the problem with situations like this is, how do you bond the steel to the wood? That's always the issue. Wood can be shot or fastened together with ease. And metal, of course, can be welded for the joints. But how do you bring the two together in a simple, functional way? The best solution? Go with a chemical bond. Adhesives can play the role of fasteners with great effect. You just need to be sure you use the right adhesive. Something chemically engineered to bond to both materials. Fortunately, the market is actually full of stuff like this. Just check out the paint aisle at the big box stores. Near the caulks and glue, you'll find other tube adhesives. If you want to know if an adhesive bonds to something, just read the specs on the tube. It'll clearly state what it's engineered for. I went with this affordable Loctite PL Premium, which I've used on other projects. You'll see here that this binds with both wood and metal, which is exactly what we need. So I grabbed it. I'll do more extensive videos on adhesives in the future, but for this project, this was great. Back in the shop, I had my cabinet carcass built with face frames attached and the quarter inch ply back panel screwed on. It was time to work the metal in. I measured and marked my angled steel at appropriate lengths, about 58 inches. Then I clamped it to a work table and cut it with a four and a half inch angle grinder with a metal cutting wheel. I did this outside so sparks wouldn't float around in the sawdust in my shop. I used eye protection, ear protection, and a face mask. I probably should have used gloves and had long pants, but it was hot and I couldn't find my gloves, so I had to go without. You should use both though. When the sections were cut, I took them inside and wiped them with a cloth to remove rust and steel dust. You want clean surfaces. I flipped my cabinet over so I could get at the underside and use gravity to my advantage. Then I cut an angled nib on the adhesive tube, punctured the seal, and loaded it into my caulking gun. Dispensing is easy. You want about a quarter inch bead, and if you can, run it in a little zigzag pattern. This will help it spread more evenly. I coated every surface the metal would touch. Then I just pressed the angled steel into the adhesive bed. I shimmied it back and forth to make it flatten the adhesive and form a pressure seal. When both of the pieces were embedded, that was really it. I left it alone, upside down in a flat place for a couple of days to really dry and bond. I probably could have flipped it after a day, but I wanted to be sure of a good set. When time was up, I flipped it back over. And it was perfect. The angled steel worked with the face frame and the back panel to provide all the support I would need. Again, a wider slotted piece would have been even stronger, but this angled steel fit every purpose I needed it for. And it really wasn't that expensive either. 
I think I paid 16 bucks a piece for these, and the adhesive was about $7 a tube. So it's not even that hard on the budget. But that's it. That's how you bond steel to wood with adhesives. It has thousands of applications, and I'll probably do it again on this channel. What do you think? Was this video helpful? Have you done this before? And if so, what was the project? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I'll link several tools and materials down below. Feel free to shop those links, and remember that when you do, we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon, and please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.